Friction. There are many different types of forces that occur in nature, but perhaps none is more familiar to us than the force of friction, typically represented by a lowercase f. Friction is a resistive force that opposes the motion of an object. So here's some sandpaper, and if you rub it across rough wood, it will smooth the wood out, but you won't be able to move very fast because as you're pushing it one way, the friction between the sandpaper and the wood is exerting a force in the opposite direction. It's opposing the motion of your hand and the sandpaper. Friction is the reason objects stop rolling or sliding along a surface. It is the reason it is difficult to start pushing a heavy box along the floor. There are many different types of friction. Friction between solid objects and air is often called air resistance. Friction between a fluid and an object is called viscosity. There are two main categories of friction, kinetic friction and static friction. Kinetic friction is the resistive force between an object and the surface it slides on that opposes the motion of the object. Static friction is the resistive force between an object and the surface it sits on that prevents the motion of the object. Static friction keeps objects from moving when a force is first applied. Where does this friction come from? Well, on a microscopic scale, most surfaces are rough. This leads to complex interactions between them that we don't need to consider yet. The force can be modeled in a simple way, but you'll have to wait for your next physics course for this. So this surface here looks pretty flat, pretty smooth. But if you put it under a microscope, hopefully you can see how the, surf the surface is quite rough and jagged there. The friction force between two objects is proportional to a constant that is large for forces that have a great deal of friction. The constant depends on both object surfaces. The constant is high for wood on sandpaper, but is lower for wood on ice. Wood has less friction when it's moving on ice than it does when it's trying to scrape off rough wood with a piece of sandpaper. In general, any pairing with ice has a low constant, and most pairings with rubber tires is high. The friction force has both positive and negative impacts on motion. The disadvantages of the force are more apparent and include the heat produced by the friction force when metal parts in a machine move against each other, causing wear and tear on the parts and reducing their effectiveness and lifespan. Increasing the amount of energy to keep objects moving due to the friction force opposing motion, such as boats in the water, cars on the roads. Increased noise due to mechanical parts rubbing against each other. The advantages of the friction force are critical to the motion of people and of machines, but are normally not thought of. Without friction, people could not walk. When walking, a person's foot pushes down on the ground and a friction force pushes back up, like we showed in that example a few slides back. Without friction, think of being on ice. Walking is much more difficult. Car tires require friction so when the tire rotates it can move the car. Without friction the tire would just spin and the car would not move. Again, picture a car on an icy road. It would not be possible to write with a pen or pencil as they would just slide on the paper. 